Hello everyone. This is the start of Unit 6. Its title is Entropy, Gives Free Energy and Thermodynamics. While we just finished up kinetics in Unit 5, remember kinetics describes the speeds of reactions. In the field of thermodynamics, scientists want to learn how to predict whether a reaction will happen or not. And in this particular video, I'll talk about spontaneity of a reaction, introduce entropy, the thermodynamic parameter entropy, and give you the Boltzmann equation. Spontaneity. Let's label this A. Spontaneity. Will a reaction happen? And what can we use to predict whether a reaction will happen? Simply, spontaneity is the process does occur under specific setting conditions. And those conditions can be uh, temperature, pressure, concentration of solutions, etc. And if the process does occur under a specific set of conditions, then we're going to say that that process could be a reaction is spontaneous. Now, if it doesn't occur under those conditions, then the opposite is going to be considered non-spontaneous. Simple enough, but there's some processes that are a little bit harder than others to predict spontaneity or not. Let me give you a couple examples. Let's go with two columns. Spontaneous versus non-spontaneous. The first one I want to talk about is a ball rolling downhill. That's spontaneous. In contrast, a ball at the bottom of the hill rolling uphill. That's non spontaneous. See, to get the ball rolling uphill, we do have to have a constant, a constant uh, input of energy. Still, some students have at first a hard time understanding this, you still got to get the ball rolling. So if you're at the very top of the hill, right, you still got to get the ball rolling by inputting some energy. So there almost always will be some activation energy. So this still requires, I know we're talking about a physical process, um, we learned about activation energy in a chemical sense. Still requires some input, and I'm still going to consider it activation energy. I will call it activation energy. I think when you're deciding spontaneous versus non spontaneous, you don't want to overthink it. Let's say rusting of iron. Let's try that example. Over time, iron will naturally rust. Sure, you need oxygen, you need uh, a little bit of heat, but it is considered spontaneous. It will occur under certain conditions. What will not occur is you take rust and it becomes iron. Iron and O2. That is not spontaneous. 
or non-spontaneous. Let's take another process, water freezing at negative 10 degrees C. That seems pretty obvious. All right. And in contrast, what is non-spontaneous is ice melting at negative 10 degrees C. One last example. Let's continue with water. Ice melting at room temperature versus ice freezing at room temperature. This one's interesting because when ice melts, you are still inputting energy. It still requires an input of energy, but it's still spontaneous. Okay, Spontaneous is not whether it requires energy or not, is maybe what I'm trying to say. There's another thermodynamic parameter that helps determine sp spontaneity. We'll get to that in just a bit. Okay, a couple of notes. Just to, just to make sure that we're not accidentally fooled whether something is spontaneous or not. Spontaneous processes can be both, well not both, but they can be endothermic or exothermic. Spontaneous processes or uh, reactions can be an, uh, exothermic. Let's do that first. Or endothermic. And that, you know, the exo and endothermic point directly at heat, refer directly to heat. Not all, and this is pretty obvious now, not all exothermic reactions are spontaneous. That's a common misconception, that if it's exothermic, that it's spontaneous. Let me give you an idea, an example. What about water? solidifying H2O liquid uh, goes to yes H2O solid actually this is endothermic delta H equals negative 6.01 per mole. I should write here also. Um, not all endothermic. Maybe this is what I wanted to say for this example. Not all endothermic reactions are non-spontaneous. Okay. Let's pretend we have this at 5 degrees C, this process. Now I'm c confusing myself. What, what bullet point am I trying to prove? Water, liquid, going to ice, right, is definitely exothermic. You're losing heat. Okay, I see where I'm going with this. I had it right the first time. I'm looking at this bullet point here. Many times, actually a lot of times, an exothermic reaction is spontaneous, but this does not happen spontaneously at 5 degrees C, even though at 5 degrees C, this freezing is, is exothermic. It has to be exothermic. So this is one case where it's exothermic, but it is non-spontaneous. Oof. I finally figured out what my point was. 
we'll do more examples and I will show you a way to determine whether something is spontaneous or not towards the end of the video. But a lot of reactions that are exothermic are spontaneous. So this is what I want to write. I'll put a star here now instead of an asterisk. This is super important. A negative delta H, okay, this is enthalpy, but we could also know it's heat under most reactions. Enthalpy is going to be the same as heat. Does favor spontaneity. It's not a determinant alone, but it does favor spontaneity. But this is not the sole factor. If it was, then yeah, we could predict spontaneity based on the delta H. There's another factor. Don't forget, this is called enthalpy. Entropy is the other thermodynamic term that we need, actually. Entropy is uh, delta S. And this is really, um, I'll give you a, a very simplified definition. It's a measure of disorder. I'll give you the more formal definition in part B of this video. Measure of disorder. And we don't know, or I haven't told you why, but just remember that a positive delta S, a gain in disorder, right? A gain in disorder uh, favors, okay, so we have that term again, favors spontaneity. So look what we have here. We have a negative delta H or negative enthalpy and it favors spontaneity usually or not usually it does favor spontaneity but it doesn't really doesn't mean that the reaction is spontaneous because we also need to consider the entropy term entropy which is a measure of disorder and if that's positive then that also favors spontaneity Conclusion. If delta H is negative and delta S is positive, yes, 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 absolutely a reaction is spontaneous. Is always spontaneous. That's true. Now I could feel out there that you're trying to do all the permutations. Well, what if delta H is positive and delta S is positive? Or what if both are negative? Okay, we will learn that actually in a couple of videos from here. But for now, because a negative delta H favors spontaneity and a positive delta S favors spontaneity, we know this to be true always. Okay, I've mentioned entropy a couple times. Let me give you the formal definition in part B of this video. Entropy. Entropy symbols S and we do see sometimes just S, not the delta. So you can have a value that is just the um, measure of disorder for a system. And to get delta S, you'll do final minus initial. 
but let's focus on just plain S is a measure. This may seem like a definition that's not um, that's not very close to what I gave, the measure of the disorder, but it actually is. It's a measure of how spread out. Or dispersed. The system's energy is. The, it's a weird definition. I I admit that. The system's energy is. A couple bullet points that may give more um, flavor to this definition. Like I said, entropy can be considered a measure of disorder. How random, how chaotic a system is. That's interesting. Because I just said in the previous page that a positive delta S, a gain in disorder, is uh, typically part of a spontaneous reaction. We'll get to that in just a bit. Another asterisk, another point you want to understand is that how sp spread out, entropy is how spread out a system's energy is, and I'm going to add a, a term, in space. Oh boy, this this entropy thing is getting a little bit um, abstract. One more, and then I'll give you a cartoon. If you increase the volume, then entropy increases. And it's a very specific example, because in this bullet point or this asterisk, I'm talking about gas. and for the first, you know, parts of entropy, we're gonna we're just gonna focus on gas. It's the easier way to think about disorder and how the molecules or atoms are their energy is being spread out. Let's take a box, and there's a divider. And on the left side of the box, you have a bunch of mol. Uh, gas molecules. Let's say O2. Let me draw 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. If you take away the divider, what's going to happen? Again, we don't want to overthink things. The gas molecules are going to spread out. Oh. See, we're starting to consider entropy now. How spread out yeah, physically the molecules are spread out, but also the system's energy is dispersed, is spread out. You could think of it that way. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. This is spontaneous. You know this happens. You remove the barrier, the gas molecules spread out. So this process is spontaneous. And intuitively, we know that the gas molecules are more disordered here. They're less confined, right? So we're going to say that the delta S is positive. Okay, so that jives where I, I said that the delta S, when positive, favors spontaneity. Favors spontaneity. What about delta H? Uh, let's say the temperature is constant, pressure is constant, it's just spreading out. There really is no change in the heat. So in this case, delta H uh, is zero. 
um, I never gave you actually units. Uh, Delta H we're pretty familiar with kilojoules per mole. Uh, Delta S is a little bit trickier because uh, for some reason it's expressed in joules and it's joules per mole and actually there's a temperature component so if you multiply this by Kelvin then we could get rid of the Kelvin so not in this video but in a future video we're going to look at how to treat our values of Delta S and the units but for now that's fine and I'm just going to sum it up one last time one last time a negative delta H and we know that as exothermic favor spontaneity or favors oh, we'll say spontaneity there's a term for that that's called enthalpically favored when it's exothermic the reaction is enthalpically favored favored to go in the forward direction right from left to right in contrast now that we've talked a little bit about entropy hopefully this is a little bit better to digest when you have a positive entropy or an increase in disorder that favors spontaneity and it has its own term and tropically favored now a reaction can be enthalpically favored but still not be spontaneous because maybe the delta s is very very negative and vice versa we will talk about how to combine these terms in a mathematical formula to literally get whether the reaction is spontaneous or not but again that's quite a bit of ways it's a couple of videos from now the last part of this video is going to be quick I want to introduce what's called the Boltzmann equation we have entropy and it is S, it's not delta S K ln of W may be rare that you'll be using this equation directly but it's still good to know what this means, what the terms mean S is entropy and that's going to be in joules per K uh, we're not going to worry about the per mole Okay, so depending on how many molecules you're considering yeah you can figure out the moles and just divide it but entropy um, especially if there's no delta and you're not looking at a specific reaction joules per K this is a Boltzmann constant and it has a specific value all the time like the uh, like the gas constant this one is 1.38 times 10 to the minus 23 joules per K and you multiply that by L and a W I'm gonna put this in pink it's kind of a abstract definition number of energetically equivalent um, different ways to oh sorry different ways the molecules in a system can be arranged in the next video we're going to literally do that here we have 10 molecules of gas and when we open up the cell or open up the um, the compartment it spreads out and those are finding different ways to arrange in the system it's a little bit like I said abstract 
I'll try to give you a very defined situation in the next video. <clears throat> um, is that all I want to say about the Boltzmann, though? Yeah, let me stop here with the Boltzmann. This is where we'll pick up in the next video, and I'll give you a uh, simplified version of this situation here, and we're going to figure out, right? We're going to figure out which state is has the highest entropy, which state has the lowest entropy, uh, which change is there a gain or loss of disorder. We'll do that in the next video.